Oh, I was on the wrong screen. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're all working. It says it's connecting. Oh, and it says it's connected to Facebook and YouTube. That's always a bonus. So let's hope we are. Hi, David. Oh, it's Debbie, actually. Not David. Debbie comes on under David. Hi, Debbie. Um, I don't know who else is going to be joining us. Hopefully more than just you and I, Debs. Otherwise, it's you might get a bit bored with me. Just be me and you chit-chatting. So if there is anybody watching on Facebook, please, please, please say hello so that we know that we're not on our own. I'm a bit behind on myself today. Um, I've been trying to prep for the new TV show um, next week. So I was still working on that at gone six or working thank you martin hi sarah hi mum so that means all three are live and kicking it's what we like hi catherine right i put all that bump on there and i'm going to turn it off again in a minute i feel like i'm like looking under my glasses because everything seems a bit close hi tim at uh, kim even hi amanda Hi Tina, oh look, everybody's rolling in now. So as you may or may not know, we have um, announced our move to Hobby Maker. Our first show is next Tuesday. Hi Di, Di, your samples have arrived. Lovely, thank you very much. Sorry I didn't get to message you earlier, um, but you're gonna see them tonight. Um, yeah, so we have moved to Hobby Maker. Hi Carol. Um, it's all coming through now. Hello, everybody. Anne, Janice, Eileen. Uh, lovely to see you at the weekend, Eileen. Right, so, as I was saying, we've moved to Hobby Maker. Um, it is purely a business decision. It's been a bit of a battle um, with one thing and another um, on Create Craft, so we made the decision that it was time to have a move. Hi, Jules. Um, please let me know if you're still on that place. Hi, Mary. Um, Linda. Uh, yeah, so... Yes, yeah, so we've moved to Hobby Maker and our first show is next Tuesday at 3 p.m. and then again at 7 p.m. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be nice to maybe, I don't know who I'm working with yet. Uh, we are there for their birthday week, which is lovely. We're launching in there on our, their birthday week. Hi, Trisha. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Candice. Hi, Tonya. Yeah, I think we've got everybody. Ooh, can't keep up with everybody. Uh, no, Eileen, they haven't. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow. If not, it'll probably be monday don't you just love it um but ping me an email and let me know how many you want and i'll make sure they put aside for you when they come in right so as per normal when we're doing tv i show you all our fab design team samples before um the show so that you can see them because you don't get to see them all on the tv they put so much work into it you may have just heard me allude to die um die has come in as a guest designer for us on this show uh, she sent so many samples in today. It was madness. She must have been really busy. Yay, Dawn finally found us. Hi, Denise. Right, so we are going to get to looking at all the samples. Um, you probably all know what stamps we are using. Um, they would have been on Great Craft. But now they're going to be on Hobby Maker. So I'm going to switch this off. I'm going to switch this one off for a minute. And I'm going to spin us round really quick. Um, I've kept you on, Jules. So um, if you just want to either give us a ring tomorrow or let me know and I'll pop it back on available for you to book online. Um, but it is the last place. So if you can let me know as soon as possible, that will be lovely. Right, so these are the ones we're going to be doing. So we have Magnolia, which you've all seen. Well, you've seen these a few times now, so... We'll whiz through these. So we've got Magnolia. We've got Clematis Flowers. We've got Crocus. Um, we've got Clematis Spray. We have Floral Silhouette, which says, when life gives you a beautiful day, make beautiful memories. We haven't had one of those today around here. I don't know about where you are. Um, wake up, smile, and tell yourself, today is my day. And then today, make today ridiculously amazing. Then we have Daffodil Delight, 
which says happy birthday, thank you, birthday wishes, and it's time to celebrate. And they all kind of fit in this little gap here. Hi, Carol. Uh, then we have balloon corner. So we've got the lovely big balloon corner. Then we've got up, up and away today's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. And then just a happy birthday. Then we have spring has sprung, which is the one I used in two weeks back on the video. So you've got all the different little spring flowers on there. Um, uh, as far as our stencils go, we've got the corner wave stencil. If you haven't seen the card that a couple of the cards that um, Di has made, I posted on Facebook with these. Um, they are fab. Uh, then we've got the grunge frame. Then we have our background squiggles. And then trailing foliage, which we will be using in today's little demo after we've gone through everything. Assuming it's not like nearly midnight. Oh, I'm glad you joined us tonight, Teresa. Oh, wrong one. That's the wrong one. Right, so that's all the stamps. Shall we get through some cards? I've got so many here. That I've had to stack them up on the shelf behind me. So we'll get started. So this is just a mixture of all the stencils. So we have, um, this is one of Di's ones. So this is the Corner Waves. And she's used spring flowers on here. And then this happy birthday is from our Daftil Delight stamp set. Uh, let's see if she's put on there. Uh, we have she's used mode lawn stormy sky and squeeze lemonade and versaclair twilight embossed in clear for the sentiment and then we have a lovely one another one from die she has used weathered wood and iced spruce for this one um yep yeah, so that's just literally using the trailing frames trailing frames trailing foliage just in time, Veronica, I'll let you. <laughs> then we have a lovely one from Helen. And she's used, again, the trailing foliage here. And then these sentiments are from our floor silhouette set. And it's blueprint sketch ink on linen card that she's used here. don't know if you can get the texture. There you go. Maybe I should put these, you'll get in a sneak peek before I before I'm ready to show you. Then we have, um, this one is done by Carol. Uh, she's used a squiggle back, background, balloon corner sentiment, and distress oxides in mustard seed, pink raspberry, wilted violet, twisted citron, mermaid lagoon, and distress ink in black soot. I think that's really nice, just as a really quick card to send out. You haven't missed too much, Susan. We're just going through the samples for the TV show. Then another one from Di. I told you she's done loads. Uh, she's done, this one's using Floral Silhouette. Inks are Crack Pistachio and Broken China and the Corner Wave Stencil again. So this is the Corner Wave Stencil. I love what she's done with this. It looks like you could fall like right into it, doesn't it? And then she's put some embossing powder on that stence, on the um, stamp. Um, this is similar to the one that would have been on Facebook. Uh, and this one also is done by Di. And she has used bundled sage, Victorian velvet, tattered rose, and spun sugar on this one. And this is the carnation stamp, but if the one on Facebook was using the spring flowers again, so there's a different options. And then obviously under here is our corner waves. And then a couple more to go. This one again by Di, I'm telling you, she's done loads. Dusty Concord and Mode Lawn for this one using grunge frame and trailing foliage as well as the clematis flowers on here as well. So we've got the grunge frame in the background here. We've got the trailing foliage and then the flowers are popped on there and then again that birthday sentiment. Happy birthday sentiment is from our Daffodil Delight set. And then last but not least another one from Dye. And this is using Pixed Raspberry, Sponge Sugar, um, Versafine Smoky Grey embossed on clear for the vellum. Again, grunge frame and the corner waves. So we've got the grunge frame here. We've got the corner waves stencil. Sentiment from the Daffodil Delight. And then she's just made some flowers using some vellum. So that is our stencils collection. Obviously the stencils are predominantly used 
um, within all of our other card samples. So, as I said to you, we've got so many, I've had to stack them up on the shelf behind me. Right, so we'll go to the balloons next. So this is from Hazel, and she has you coloured with Copic markers. The sentiment is also from Balloon Corners and the stamp set is Balloon Corners. So, and then she's just, I think she's made her own background. No, it might be patterned papers on the background there. Yeah, I think it's a patterned paper she's used in the background there. But you could easily make that yourself. She hasn't written if any particular colour, so I'm assuming it is. <coughs> um, and then we have a lovely one from Helen. And she has coloured with Copic markers on the balloon corner. And this one's like a tent fold. And then she's just used her own dies for the heart shape here. But I think that's really, really nice little card. Just coloured in grey with some red mirror card on there. This one is, I was going to say this one's from Helen, but it's not. This is Hazel, and Hazel never makes big cards. So this one, again, is using Balloon Corner and Silver Embossing Powder. So that's a really quick, simple card to make, but really effective. And then she's just used the sentiment on there as well from Balloon Corner. This one is from Carol, and she has used Mustard Seed, Pixed Raspberry, Wilted Violet, Twisted Citron, Mermaid Lagoon, and there is a clear sparkle pen, which I don't think is going to show up on camera, but we'll have a try. She's just filled the balloons in so they sparkle, but I don't think it's going to show up on here. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. No, it's not going to pick it up, is it? So in all the balloons, she's coloured them in with a sparkle pen. And then another one from Carol. And she has used Stress Oxide in Picked Raspberry and Distress Watercolour Pencils, Kitsch Flamingo Picked Raspberry, Seedless Preserve and Villain Villainous Potion. Um, again, and she's used the Clear Sparkle Pen, but it's not going to show up. But she's used the squiggles, back, background squiggles in the corners there, and she's done it like a Z-fold card. So that's really nice. You don't have to do much to this stamp, that's what I love about this stamp. Um, again, another one from Carol, and she has used Mustard Seed, Pick Raspberry, Wilted Violet, Twisted Citron, and Mermaid Lagoon on this one. And again, background squiggles and balloon corner, and obviously the sentiment is from the balloon corner as well. Our design team have done us proud again, they never let us down. So this one is from Dye again, she's used balloon corner and the sentiment. Uh, verse of fine... Claire in Morning Mist to stamp this out um, and it's just like a monochrome card but it's really pretty hi Karen thank you our design team have done an amazing job and then she's just made her own like 3D one here the balloon stamp is a very handy stamp to have Susan um, this one again is from Di and she's done balloon corner distress oxide in blueprint sketch mode lawn mustard seed spice marmalade Saltwater Taffy, Picked Raspberry, Dusty Concord, Versafine Onyx Black and Clear Embossing Powder. Wow, she was busy. But I think it's really effective. And how easy is that card to make? You made your own background, popped a topper on there with your sentiment, Bob's your uncle, you're done. I know we don't always want easy cards, but it's sometimes nice if you need them. And last but not least, another one from Dye, and she's used Balloon Corner, Peeled Paint, Spiced Marmalade, Broken China, Versifying Claire in Rainforest, Summertime and Warm Breeze. So I think she must have, you know, she's used coloured papers behind and then matched the colours up with the... Hi Leslie! Right, so that is our balloon corners. As I said, we've got so many, I'm struggling as to where to put everything. I've got a little box here for afterwards and I'm trying to stack them neatly in the box. Right, so we are on to Steel Magnolia. Hi Margaret. Um, so this one is done by Hazel and she has used Memento Black Ink on this one. And the sentiment is from Balloon Corners. She's just used, I think, patterned paper on there. Yep. A section of patterned paper on there. How cute is that? Just in black and white. I love monochrome cards. I sometimes forget how much I like them until I see them being used again. Another one from Hazel, and this one is Black Memento, coloured with Copic markers 
and the sentiment is from Daffodil Delights. Hi Marianne. Marianne. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so it actually looks a little bit 3 d on that, doesn't it? But it's not, it's all one level. Uh, yes, Debbie, that's exactly what happens. They do, we send the stuff through and they get to do what they want to do with them. That's why we have the design team because everybody comes in with something a little bit different. And that's why we keep it quite a small team as well so that everybody has like their speciality. So this one is done by Hazel again, lovely one using Memento Black Ink coloured with a uh, different selection of inks. And the sentiment is from our Simple Snowdrops collection. Excuse me, suddenly got a yawn from nowhere. And she's literally gone, if you can, I don't know if you can see that, but she's kind of put our uh, circles, dye, uh, stencils and masks, a really light little circle or underneath there. You can hardly see it. Uh, Dawn, I don't know if anybody else, is for us, if we're freezing for anybody else. So if we are, please let me know. Uh, then we have one from Helen using the corner wave stencil and the magnolia stamp again quite um, one dimensional but beautiful I love this magnolia stamp um, that's what we're going to be playing with tonight if I get a chance to so people on Facebook can you let me know if I am freezing for anybody else uh, another one from that is from Carol this time she's used the sentiment is from Floral Silhouette. She's used trailing foliage in the background, but we can't really see it because her topper is too big. Uh, Distress Oxides in Rustic Wilderness and Fossilised Amber, Wild Honey and Rustic Wilderness. Oh, I hate to say it, Dawn, but I think it might just be you that's freezing up today. Maybe it's the weather and your internet connection. Thank you, everybody. So that's, again, another the lovely card from Carol. Carol has been a busy lady, too. Another one from Carol using Clematis Spray, Floral Silhouette Sentiment, and Distress Watercolour Pencils in Seedless Preserve. Again, really simple. Um, we've got a bit of splashed colour on there as well. Um, really, really nice, effective card. Again, stamped and embossed with clear embossing powder. Couple from Dye here. Corner Waves, Magnolia Stamp. Sentiment is from Daffodil Delight. Inks in Tattered Rose and Versifying Smoky Grey. So she's used our um, Corner Waves in the corner again here. Um, sentiment is from daffodil delight just a really cute little thank you card oh and you can't forget us dear <laughs> so this one again is from die and it's using the grunge frames magnolia scent magnolias hmm. she hasn't said where what her sentiment is from and off the top of my head i can't think what it is it was one of our last release, but I can't remember which one it, that sentiment is particularly on. Um, Stormy Sky and Versify Smoky Grey on here. Hi, Sue. So um, she's actually used sections here for of the grunge frame to make the background papers. So you don't have to use that whole frame just as it is. You can cut it up and do all sorts of bits and pieces with it. And that's kind of similar to what I'm doing this evening. A kind of a twist on it. And then last but not least, again from Di. Oh, good grief. Excuse me, I've suddenly got a fit of the yawns. Oh, good, Dawn. I'm glad you're back with us. Um, Daffodil Delight, Victorian Velvet, Bundled Sage and the Versifying Smoky Grey. And this is one of the, like a dimensional card that she's made. So it will stand up like so, but it looks, it's hollow. I'm trying to show you the best way to show it to you. Again, I really love this Magnolia stamp. I love playing, I have loved playing with that this afternoon. So that is all our Magnolia stamps, samples. 
and on to the next. Where are we going next? Ooh. Right, so we are on to clematis flowers. This one's been done by Hazel. She has used Memento um, grey flannel ink to stamp this out. Sentiments are from our relatively little word stamp set that we have and the background's embossed with a basket weave stencil. I'm trying to get it shaking. So she's done it as a shaker card, if you can see that. She's put the lovely flowers on here, sentiment on here, and I don't know if you can see, but she has embossed the background. Don't know if I'll pick it up. There we go, I'll hold it still. Um, that's our basket weave stencil that she's embossed. And the flowers are coloured with Copic markers and we have a bit of sparkle on there too. Which again, I don't think it's going to pick it all up. So now we have another one from Carol. She's used clematis flowers, grunge frame, daffodil delight, sentiment, distress oxide in villainous potion. Where on earth have all these? And I've just knocked one of her gems off. We shall quickly stick that back on while we're chatting. So again, villainous potion is a really nice colour for doing these kinds of things trust me to do that literally as I was about to flip the card over that will dry clear don't panic Mr Mannery Margaret I love the shaker card too so there we go that's another lovely simple card to make our design team do beautiful simple cards but they can be some really complicated ones here too um, right so we have clematis flowers done by Hazel and sentiment is from Balloon Corner. I love these ones. I love these random cards. And I'm not very good at random, as you all know. So it's always nice when I get one that I don't have to make. <laughs> and again, the sentiment is out of Balloon Corner. And the trick to doing this, I don't know if it's going to show up on here because it is really, really light. But all the way around the edge of these flowers, she's gone with a really light grey pen. It kind of grounds it so it gives it a bit of a like almost a 3d look when you've got it in your hand looks like they're coming off the page a little bit and it doesn't show up so much on the camera um this one is from dye and she's used trailing foliage clematis flowers daffodil delight sentiment a versifying clear fantasia charming pink and purple delight so she's used the um trailing foliage stencil in the background and then a similar version to what hazel did but without the coloring in and then last but not least for this one uh we have got this one by helen she's used clematis flowers white embossing powder on vellum i love it helen loves to use the um linen effect cardstock as well so again Really, really classic, beautiful, simple Helen card, and I love it. So that is our Clematis Flowers selection. Because there's a lot on this, in this collection, release, because it was our big birthday, 50th release. Um, yeah, there's a lot of samples to get through. Hence, we're doing them tonight, because you won't get them all on TV. And our design team works so hard for us. So this one's been done with Carol. But no, it hasn't. It's been done by Hazel. Um, with Clematis Spray. And the sentiment is from Flora Wishes. Which was from um, our last release. So again, it's one of the little... Um, I think it's a five inch card. Hazel makes beautiful little cards. Which was why I was a bit shocked when the bloom one was so big and it was Hazel. Because she doesn't do big cards. This is another lovely one from, little one from Hazel, and it's a clematis spray, and the sentiment is from Single Lilies. It's just been done onto patterned cardstock or to coloured cardstock, um, white embossing powder. Versus fine white embossing powder, and then she's coloured in really quickly, not perfectly because that's the whole idea of it, um, the leaves and flowers. So the only dimension on there is pearls that she's popped in the center then we have 
one from Carol, and she has used clematis flowers. Sentiment is from Daffodil Delight, and Bee Flourish is also been used on here, which is one of our older stamp sets, but shows how well they all work. So these little bees have come off our Bee Flourish stamp set, and then obviously you've got the clematis, which she has stamped out twice and 3D'd. Um, what did you want to see? Debbie, let me know and I'll try and show you. Uh, then we have another lovely one from Carol. She's gone for a dinky one and Carol never does dinky. Um, and she has used Distress Watercolour Pencils in Seedless Preserve and Rustic Wilderness. A bit of Miri card on the background to kind of tie the colours together. But again, really, really simple, but stunning. A lovely little monochrome one here from Di. And the sentiment is from Birthday Messages. Again, one of our larger cards. And those bees are lovely, aren't they? Um, then we've got another one from Di, I think. Yeah, we're getting there. We're nearly through these ones as well, my goodness. Clematis spray is with white embossing powder and sentiment is from Daffodil Delight. Onto cardstock, uh, onto craft stock. Uh, Debbie, yes, I can see your chat, but I don't know what it was you wanted me. Oh, yes, you can be seen. Sorry if I missed you on some of the comments. Sorry, uh, you whizzed through before I saw you, Debbie. Sorry. Um, we have got an amazing little design team and I'm so proud of them, which is why... I always want to show you all of their samples because there's absolutely no way we can get through all of these on TV and get all the demos done that you all want done. Um, this is another one from Dye and she's used Clematis Spray. Um, sentiments is from our Sentiments stamp set. And it's Versa Fine Claire in Twilight. I love this colour. I always forget to use it, but I think it's a really pretty colour. So again, kind of monochrome, but with blues and whites rather than black and whites. And last but not least on this one, a lovely one from Carol. Um, Clematis Spray, Daffodil Delight Sentiment and Watercolour Pencils in Seedless Preserve and Rustic Wilderness. Again, really, really nice. The only dimension on here is the sentiment here, which you could actually, if you wanted to keep it um, less dimensional, you could kind of bring this down into a smaller card that would fit through and just pop your sentiment um, without the layering on there so that is our clematis spray obviously there are a few cards that i haven't put in here that we've done on um our workshop not on our workshops on our um lives previously but they will be coming up oh debbie that's a bit weird maybe you need to sign out and come back in and it might you might have just hit a button somewhere along the line Right, spring has sprung next. It certainly hasn't sprung today. Something sprung a leak, I think. Hi, Jill. <laughs> oh, did Betty sneak in? Did I miss her? Didn't see Betty. Hi, Betty. Um, I don't know about where you are, but it has literally rained constantly all day today. And we've got nowhere else for this water to go. It's horrendous. The main, one of the main roads... From east to west, the A14 is out of three lanes, two lanes are flooded. It is causing absolute mayhem. So let's get started. Helen, um, this is Spring of Sprung Sentiment um, stamp set. Um, and she's used the lovely snowdrops. I love the snowdrops. Onto craft card. She's just done her own little squiggly black line around the edge. Don't know if you can see that. A little bit of texture with some um, embossing powder, I would imagine. But it might just be flicked on with paint. Hello, Sharon. I was actually just thinking I haven't spoken to my sister-in-law for ages. I should give her a ring. And here she springs up. Um, so we've got another one from Helen. This is Spring of Sprung coloured with Zig pens. This is a really, really old embossing folder that Helen's got. And everybody asks me about it, but I have no idea what it's called. But I know it's been around for probably 10, 12 years. Susan, you're lucky you've had no rain. My goodness, we have had some rain here today. 
This is a lovely one from Helen, from Hazel, sorry. Um, this is one of Hazel's cute little cards. I love Hazel's little cards. Spring has sprung and the sentiment is from Make-A-Wish and the um, embossing folder she's used uh, is the mesh one. So I'm gonna come in a bit closer. It's kind of monochrome again. She's used a gray ink and she's used the mesh stencil in the background run through a die cut machine to give it dimension. We had lightning as well. Oh my goodness. Don't do thunderstorms very well. Um, spring has sprung. Sentiment is from Poppy Bouquet and she's coloured with Copic markers. Again, another lovely little one from Helen. And I know they're not the nicest cards to make in the world. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but how cute is that? Wet all day on the south coast. Same here, Kim. It hasn't stopped. And we were down south in Somerset at the weekend. And just before we started to break down to come home, the heavens opened and it pretty much rained the whole way home. Um, so we've got another lovely one from Carol. See, she's thrown me again. She's done another small one. Spring has sprung a daffodil delight sentiment, distress oxide in rustic wilderness and cracked pistachio. Really sweet little, how nice would that just to be sent? Suffolk is the driest county in Britain. Not today, Debbie. <laughs> Jill, we've got a road, one of the roads out of the village here. They now actually put up high tide and low tide because it hasn't cleared since the beginning of February. It has stayed flooded since the beginning of February. They, it just makes me laugh. Like we get a high tide and a low tide on, on, on our Facebook group, which makes me laugh. So, Carol, you've thrown me with all your dinky little cards, but they're really sweet. Thank you. Um, this is the one that I did last week on, or the week before last, with Spring Has Sprung, um, coloured with Zig Clean Colour Pens. Another one from Carol. See, this is what I'm used to Carol doing. Um, Spring Has Sprung and Distress Watercolour Pencils in Rustic Wilderness, Wild Honey, Picked Raspberry and Shaded Lilac. And then again, another, I love that idea. <coughs> That'd be quite nice on the front of a card, wouldn't it? With a, a nice big Easter sentiment or something like that in there. I'm trying to keep up with you. Right. See, Betty, you did sneak in. Hello, Betty. Um, and now this is one from Di. I can't actually tell you the size of this one, but it's a big card. Spring has sprung. A sentiment is from Simple Snowdrops. Uh, versa fine clair in glamorous summertime golden meadow shaded shady lane paradise monarch and charming pink distress oxides in bundled sage salvage patina shaded lilac victorian velvet tumble glass and stormy sky was there any room left on your desk die after you did all of had all of those colors out again really simple card to make but really really effective ah it's a 10 by 7 thank you very much die it's a lovely card and then she's kind of um, second or third generation stamped in the background there. Another one from Di. She has used Spring Has Sprung Sentiment from Simple Snowdrops. Versifying Claire in Glamorous Summertime. Golden Meadows, Shady Lane, Paradise Monarch and Charming Pink Distress Oxide in Bundled Sage and Shaded Lilac. So again, just random. And then last but not least, another lovely one from Di, and she's used Spring Has Sprung and our Wellies stamp, I'll show you in a moment. Daffodil Delight Sentiment, and she's used Watercolour Pencils and Distress Oxide Bundled Sage. There we go. How cute is that? I love it. In fact, I may have to use that idea. So she's 3 d the Wellies a little bit, popping some um, silicon glue or hot glue gun behind them, I'm not sure which. But how effective does that look with those flowers out the top? I love it. So that is our Spring Has Sprung stamp set. I'm running out of space here, people. I thought what I'd got down here was going to be big enough to contain all of these stamps. My goodness, we're 35 minutes in and I still haven't finished going through everything. So we'll move it on. We may have to whisk through the card in a little while. 
Right, so we are on to a floral silhouette. This one's a lovely one from Hazel. Coloured, uh, different types of inks used in the background and the sentiment is also floral silhouette. Love it, absolutely love it. I think it's so, so effective. Again, a small, I think that must be a six inch card, that one. And then again, this is another one that I did previously on our Facebook Lives. So they're just distress oxides and you can go back and watch how we did that one. Uh, this one is from Helen and she used Corner Wave Stencil and Floor Silhouette Stamp. And also used our Circles, Stencils and Dye, uh, Stencils and Masks Stamp up uh, in the background there to do, your, to do the circle with it uh, underneath. And then we have one from Hazel, uh, a selection of different inks, floral silhouette, uh, both sentiment and inks. Again, really, really effective. So you don't have to use the whole stamp. I know it's a big stamp, but you don't have to use the whole piece. I mean, when you think that's exactly the same stamp set being used to do the, both of those and how different they are. Right, this one is from Carol. She's used Floral Silhouette, Corner Waves, Balloon Corner Sentiment and Distress Oxide in Mermaid Lagoon. Again, just using those little corners from the floor, from the corner waves and then opposite corners inside. You know how I like to bring things into them? Inside of the cards. So again, that's a lovely one from Carol. Another one from Carol. She's used Distress Oxides in Mustard Seed, Picked Raspberry, Wilted Violet, Twisted Citron and Mermaid Lagoon. Love it. Really bright and breezy. I kind of needed some bright and breezy today. I love this stamp set too, Jill. When I first did it, I was a bit worried that maybe it was a bit big. But I have had so much fun playing with it. Look, my arm's sticking in the way there. Um, so this one's from Dye. She's used Squiggles. Background squiggles, floor silhouette, distress oxides in tea dye, Versaline Claire Twilight Clear Embossing Powder. Just so effective. Literally that squiggle stencil all over the background in different angle at different angles. And then last but not least, another one from Dye. Floor silhouette, white embossing powder, picked raspberry and sponge sugar, just a Versafine Onyx Black clear embossing powder for the sentiment. Again, really simple way of, but effective way of using it. Right, so that is floor silhouette. I think we've got one more to go. Alright, let's get going. Oh, the last one, last but not least. And I spun them all the way around so I had to stretch around. Sorry for all of the ooing and ahhing. And. So we have Daffodil Delight. Um, sentiment is from Proud Day. It's stamped in Memento Ink Black. Background embossed stripe from Knitted Blanket. So, uh, sorry, it's Hazel. <laughs> Didn't say who it was from. So I don't know if it's going to pick it up. But it's very lightly embossed this piece here. With the, from the knitted blanket so she's put it through the embossing machine and it's a stencil but it's not going to pick it up so another lovely one from hazel another hazel card daffodil delight colored with copic markers and the sentiment is from floor silhouette and then she's just got a little bit of matte mirror card behind it Then we have one from Carol. Um, Daffodil Delight, Trailing Foliage, Distress Oxide in Rustic Wilderness, Distress Watercolour Pencils in Fossilised Amber, Wild Honey and Rustic Wilderness. So Carol has fussy cut this out, bless her. She's also done the same thing and run this through a die cut machine. So she's put a little bit of texture on the background there. 
Um, and then she's also used it underneath here. It's just peeking out the bottom. So what happens to all the cards? Well, we use an awful lot of them um, on all our boards. Obviously, Debbie, you know when you come to the workshops, we have a lot out on display. Um, but we keep them because they get used, because we bring stuff back onto TV and things like that. We swap the boards around so nothing goes to waste, I promise. So much to Martin's disgust because we have got boxes and boxes and boxes of them, as I'm sure you can imagine. Amanda, you're not going to be happy with me for tonight's demo then, are you? Because we've got a little bit of fussy cutting to go. Um, so we have Daffodil Delight, Trailing Foliage, Distress Oxide in Rustic Wilderness, Distress Watercolours, Fossilised Amber, Wild Honey, Rustic Wilderness. Carol again, another lovely one from Carol. So she's used the trailing frames in the background to do her background cutting. And um, then obviously our daffodils. Delight stamp there. Um, I'm going to whiz a little bit now because I can, I'm well aware of how long we've been on here now. Daffodil Delight, Corner Waves, Grunge Frame, Distress Oxides in Peel Paint, Mustard Seed. Distress Watercolour Pencils in Peel Paint, Mustard Seed and Rustic Wilderness. And again, another lovely one from Carol. So she's used the rustic frames around the edge of the actual card base. And then she's used the corner waves and then obviously the Daffodil Delight stamp in the middle. This one is from Helen. She has, hasn't said what she's coloured it with, but I'm assuming it's copied markers. And I don't know if you're going to pick it up, but we have a glittery circle around the edge, which I would imagine is either a really fine glue nib um, and glitter popped on the top, or it could be, but I don't think it is, it could be stickles. But again, a really lovely card. And do you remember the card candy from way back when? That's what she's used here. So this one is from Dye, and she has used Rusty Hinge and Wild Honey on this one. Again, clean and simple. It is what it is. Lovely bright colours and just stamped and embossed in black. So this one is also from Dye and she's used Mustard Seed, Versafine Onyx Black and Gold Embossing Powder on here. I can't really show you this to the full extent because of the way the card is designed, but it's an easel card. And it's been stamped and embossed in Gold Embossing Powder. So that's how it would stand up. Which is lovely, thank you Dye. Another one from Dye and she's done the vellum wrap over the top. So we've got the grunge frame in the background so it just kind of peeks through on your vellum and she's stamped and embossed that over the top. Mustard seed, mowed lawn and bundled sage for that one. I'm sorry peeps, I am whizzing through. Ah, that's it for the daffodil delights because we've I've put two piles together here. Um, and then last but not least, crocus. So we have our crocus stamp. So this one, Carol, again, you've thrown me. Can't keep doing this to me. Crocus coloured with watercolour pencils, rustic wilderness and seedless preserve. How cute is that? Just as a little thank you card, you could send that out. Um, and she's just laid that onto a piece of craft card. This one is a hazel card. She's used memento black ink coloured with copics. Um, background is a brick wall stencil. Um, paint. Paper strip embossed with mesh stencil and sentiment is from Proud Day. I don't think the paper strip with mesh stencil was included in the end. Um, but she's done the same thing. She's popped that through the die cut machine so the brick wall is embossed. But really sweet little card. Um, this one is also hazel. She has used Memento Black Ink coloured with Copic markers. Background is the script stencil no script stamp sorry and we have an embossed strip with the mesh stencil i think that's where that comes in so she's used the strip of craft card here that she's embossed through the embossing machine die cut machine this is our script background that she stamped on top of with the crocus Then another lovely big one from Dye. I'm assuming this is also a 10 by 7. It's been stamped with Versafine 
Smoky Grey and Sentiment with Versafine Claire Monarch and Bundled Sage and Dusty Concord has been used. Really, really effective. Really like that card. And again, it's a big card. This is a 10 by 7, I'm assuming, again. And then another one from Dai, and she has used um, Sentiment from Daffodil Delight, Oxide Bundled Sage, Fossilised Amber, Shaded Lilac, Versifying Onyx Black, Embossed in Clear. And this is one of those twister cards. So she's painstakingly cut that out and it spins around. So when it's up, I don't know if you'll see it from there, but you can see it's a spinner. And she's used an embossing folder on the background of some pearl cardstock. And then last but not least, a lovely one from Carol using Crocus Sentiments from Daffodil Delight and she's coloured it with watercolour pencils. Again, really, really effective, simple card. So that is all our samples from our amazing little design team. Thank you, ladies. We couldn't do this without you. Um, I am now going to quickly rush and try and do a really quick demo for you. I have prepped quite a lot of this and I am going to do it as a prepped one because otherwise we'll still be here at midnight. So what are we actually using? Threw all of this on here really quick earlier. Um, so we have got our sticky glue, which you know we always use. We're going to be using Stormy Sky, Crystal Clear Embossing Powder and Versa Fine Onyx Black. Anti-static bag. Um, we've got the cardstock, it is now back in 300 GSM as well, so we've got 250 or 300 GSM. And then we've got black cardstock. I would recommend going for the 120 GSM for this. There's quite a little bit of layering, but you want it to be really subtle so the um, the lighter weight will be better. And then we've obviously got the 270 GSM cardstock as well. Um, the stamps we are using are... Oh, that's the wrong pile. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. We're going to be using... Trailing Foliage Stencils and Mask. Thank you, Catherine. They are a fab little team. Floral Silhouette for the Sentiments. And then we're using um, our Magnolia Stamp Set. Right. Measurements. I've written them down and I've covered them up. Okie dokie. Don't need that. Don't know why that's there. So we are using a landscape card. This is an A5 landscape, so it's folded to make it to a tent. We're going to use it as a tent fold. We have got an A4 sheet of paper. Now, it doesn't have to be A4. I'm using A4 just because that's what I used earlier to, to make it. And then I thought, well, I've got backgrounds extra then afterwards. So you don't, because you're not going to use the whole thing, but I'm going to do the whole thing, if that makes sense. Um, black cardstock in five and three eighths by seven and seven eighths. Sorry, ladies and gents. Um, a piece of white cardstock in five and a quarter by seven and three quarter inches. You then just need some scraps. So scraps for the sentiments, scraps for some cutting out, fussy cutting. Sorry, Amanda. And then I don't know about anybody else, but when you cut down all these A4 sheets of paper into a square, you end up with loads of little bits and pieces. So I keep all of those. I just shove them in this bag and um, I go back and raid it to do what this kind of thing. So that's the other bits and pieces that you need. It is literally just raiding your scraps box. Okay, so I'm going to pop these out of the way just for a few moments. As I said, I am not going to go through and do the whole thing because I have got some of it ready and we will be here all week if I do do that and we are nearly an hour already so here we go as I said we're using stormy sky now I don't have a separate brush for every color some people do and that is entirely your choice um, 
purely because I can't keep them in stock to get, get long enough to get my own one of every colour. So I try and take as much of the ink out of the brush from the previous colours as I can every so often. We wash them. Sorry, you're getting a bit of a wobble on there, aren't you? Um, but that it is what it is. So I'm not using this part at the moment. We're not using the stencil. We're going to use the masks. Now, I don't need my scraps at the moment. I am going to pop it on here purely because it helps me to hold the stencil down or the mask down. It will not hold it in place for the whole time. I'm going to tell you now. It will not hold it for every piece. There are some real wiggly bits here. But for this particular design, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're making a background paper that we're going to be chopping up anyway. So I'm literally taking our colour and we're just going to brush. I prefer it not to move quite that much. Try again. We're just going to brush the colour on there. As I said, this is a bit wiggly. So hold it in place a little bit so you do get some of that definition. But it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. We're just making a background. And as I said, I am going to do some of this just to roughly show you. Um, but I have done set a whole piece already. And I've chopped it all up so we've got bits of the whole piece. But you're going to get the idea. I'll keep my finger on it a bit more, I think. <laughs> Some of the pink is coming off on this too, so we've got a little bit of a mix of colours. But you'll get the idea. So we're just going to randomly move this around. Flipping it over, it doesn't matter. But it's not all the same way round. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect. You are making your own background paper. It can be however you want it to be. I'm not loading enough ink onto my brush, I don't think, to do what I want to be doing here. But you're getting the idea. And now I've developed a squeak on my chair, on my table as well. Not just my chair, the table as well now. Oh, can't be struggling with it, Carol. It makes fab backgrounds, absolutely amazing backgrounds. You saw that a couple of the design team have run it through um, die cut machines. It's really great for that too. And you can overlap them. Again, as I say, don't worry about where it is and what it's doing. You are making a background page that we are going to chop up. It's about getting some dimension in there and just doing something different with them. Can you all hear that squeak or is it just me? You've all gone quiet on me now because I've I've stopped waffling. Just 
just because I stopped waffling doesn't mean you can. It's nice to know when people are struggling um, with something that they've got because let me know and I will try and do something with them on our Facebook lives and YouTube lives. Now, I know we're supposed to be doing these every other week, but the next fortnight would be, we'll be in Manchester doing, well, I'm glad you can't hear the squeak because it's driving me insane. Um, so we won't be here a week or two weeks time, um, but I will announce when the next one's going to be as soon as I can work it out in the diary. Now, obviously I've said go along and do the whole thing. I haven't got time to do the whole thing tonight. So I'm then going to go in with... No, I don't want them up the stint. You can add in this one too. I haven't done it with this one in it as well. Um, I just did it with that, with the other background. But yeah, you could. This one's got obviously got a lot more wiggly bits. So hang on to it a bit tighter and be a bit more cautious about how you're doing it. But Carol, definitely get it out and play with it. What's the worst that can happen? You have to replace a piece, bin a piece of paper. I mean, at the end of the day, that is the worst that can happen. But as I say, it's a bit more wiggly, this one. So just hold it in place as you're doing it. So I'm not going to carry on. You'll, you kind of get the idea. And then take the mask, uh, the stencil, not the masks. I'm going to take the stencil. Now, I'm going to use this particular piece, but I don't want to get the edges. So wherever you position it, just think about it, because you want to be able to lay the ink down without it catching these edges. So I've just got scrap bits of paper. And I'll just pop those underneath so that you don't get that hard line that you'll curse. You can't see what people are saying. That's weird. You must have hit something, Debbie. Um, so just randomly position it wherever you want. It's again the same colour. I haven't changed the colours. We're just working with the same colours. You might have gone into private messages rather than being on or on a private chat rather than being on the group somehow, Debbie. I don't know how you'd have done it, but you might have done. Um, so this is literally what I mean by, um, as I say, I'm not going to go in and do it all. So you're just building it up to make your background. This is what I ended up with. Um, I've got one here which Mum did. And these are supposed to both be Stormy Sky, but I think this is because mine's got other inks in the background. Um, but two, just two different inks. I'm saying Stormy Sky. Mum might have used Weathered Wood on that one, I'm not sure. Um, so that's the kind of effect we're going to come up with once you've built all of that up. So I know I'm rushing and not finishing that off completely. But that's what we're going to be doing. I did it as a 12 by as an A4 piece because then I've got pieces left over. And that's what I wanted. So that you can make a, a full sheet background and have a couple of bits and pieces left over to do other things with. Now. So as I said, we're doing it tenfold. And I've taken that large white piece of cardstock and I've just gone round the edge with my blending brush and lightly all the way across, really lightly. Um, it must just be the other inks that are inside my um, brush as well then, Mum, because it looks different colour, but I still like it. 
sorry, I've got ink all over my fingers. I'm just going to get rid of that and just wipe that down. Again, um, so that's the background done. We have literally gone round the outside of that piece of cardstock and we're going to layer those two pieces up, hopefully, if we're not blocked up. And I'm going to layer these two before I put the black down because I like to have a little bit of wiggle room to get them as level as I can. So that's those two. And then we will pop that one on. And I do it like this, as you will know, because it gets rid of a few bits of paper to save me losing everything on the table right so then I took my big piece of paper and I cut it into random size strips and I mean they are random just I've got I don't know one inch two inch half an inch and I cut the different lengths now I tried it without without lining it without layer matting it and I didn't really I think it got a bit lost so then I just went round and put a really, really fine border around it in black. And as I say, it's tiny, but it just makes those pop. So just random strips I cut, different sizes, different widths, different lengths. And then we're going to position these on here. like so and you kind of got to work out your, your spacing before you stick anything down because you don't want anything overlapping so roughly where you want them to be and then I'm just going to glue these down as well And say so there's no right or wrong way, no right way up, no wrong way up. I'm not pressing that down too hard yet because I want to have some wiggle room if I need it. So I'm just literally positioning them first. and I want them at different heights and as I say I haven't pressed any of that down yet because if I do need to move them, hopefully they'll still lift off. There we go, roughly. That's where I'm happy with them, so we'll just push it down. So that is the background strips. Now this is the bit Amanda said she doesn't like fussy cutting, and she doesn't like fussy cutting, but if she wants to make this card, she's going to fussy cut. Um, so we need our Magnolia stamp set. And we're going to put some, I'm just going to put a lid on that so I don't put anything in the middle of it. This is just a scrap piece of paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just one of those bits that are in my bag of bits at the side of me because obviously I cut a lot of white and a lot of black cardstock so I have a bag full of white bits and a bag full of black bits <coughs> just gonna stamp this on press down get my trusty piece of paper ready to put my embossing powder on 
Oh, you've all gone really quiet on me again. Either you've been, I've been here too long and you've left me, or um, I've got you hooked. <laughs> so black ink, crystal clear embossing powder. Light tap to take the excess off. And then we are going to heat emboss that. Now, as you know, I heat from underneath, which gives us a slightly smoother finish for the um, embossing powder on this particular end. You don't have to heat from underneath if you're not happy. Just be prepared that your embossing powder may dance around a little bit. So you might end up with bits in places that you don't want it to be. just going to literally take a piece of scrap or a piece of kitchen paper to do this I know other people do use other products or use um you know, a dry um wet wipe or something like that I haven't got any dry wet wipes so I couldn't use that and I'm literally just picking up some ink and I'm rubbing the excess off and then I'm just going to go in and add a little bit of color to this magnolia doesn't have, it's not perfect please don't try and make it perfect because it won't be I just don't want it to be completely white I have to sort out the screen now by doing it with the piece of kitchen paper as well it does mean that as you're putting the ink on there, and it really is a really subtle little light blue. I don't even know if you can even see that, but it is a really light, subtle blue. But by doing it like that, because quite often the if you go over the top of ink with a blending brush or something, and then you try and buff it off for the oxides to still make your embossing powder shiny, it doesn't always buff off as, as easily, um, but that way it does get rid of that because that's going to spread a long way and we will just clean off the mat here now as I said it's a bit of fussy cutting so I am going to go in and I am going to leave a small border all the way around this stamp but I am going to go in as, around the whole stamp I have again already done this so I'm just going to cut the first little bit to show you and then we'll move on to the one that I did earlier Now the trick to fussy cutting is to move the paper rather than your scissors. So if you notice my right hand doesn't move very much but the cut, the images that I'm cutting out are moving. So obviously my scissor hand moves a little bit sometimes but predominantly it doesn't move. I spin the cardstock around rather than, and I very very rarely get to the very end tip of my cutting. I love fussy cutting, so I do a lot of it. And it doesn't take very long. It's just, it just makes such a difference to what we're doing when we, you'll see when I finish this. I did try it as a topper on a square piece or a rectangular piece, just didn't have quite the same effect.
and when you get to a point that you can get rid of excess, get rid of the excess on you when you're cutting out. As I say, I'm not going to cut the whole thing. I'm just going to get to a point where I can stop and show you what I have done. Now, I've left the white border because I wanted it to pop a little bit. So, as I say, there is a little bit of fussy cutting on this one because you are going to layer this onto black and do the same again. But I will show you. So I'm just going to stop cutting there, get rid of that so I can see where I'm at. Um, and I'll bring it up so you can see what I mean. You have got a really fine white border all the way around the edge. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you will end up with... I thought I'd got one cut out. Yes, I have. With it looking like so. I have left this section in here to keep it, give it a bit more stability. I then put some glue on the back and stuck that onto a piece of scrap black and did exactly the same thing and went round and gave it a black border. Let's pop it on some white, plain white cardstock then you can see what I mean. So you've got the black image that you stamped out, you've got your little white border around the edge and then you've got a really fine black freehand cut, fussy cut border around that. I've used the sentiment from um, Floral Silhouette. When life gives you a beautiful day, make beautiful memories. So we've got our card stuck here. I'm going to pop that sentiment on some foam pads that I have here somewhere. Those are too big, so I'll cut them down a little bit. That wasn't a smart move, Amanda. some glue on the back of your foam pads that gives you the wiggle room I'm going to tuck that under there out roughly where it's going to be. And I don't know whether I should pop that up or... Yeah, I think we'll put a couple of little foam pads underneath this as well. So I've just got some of the tiny little ones. Oh. Obviously, I don't need a wiggle room for this once it's down. So I won't be putting glue on these ones. If I can get the backing off. Oh, come on, be nice to me. It's been a long day. <laughs> isn't being very friendly to me but we'll get there in the end. Don't know if I should have put them up on foam pads or not. Anyway, I have so it is what it is now. finger and I really need to get one under there. There we go. So that is our finished card. Don't forget I normally carry something through into the middle. Um, where did I put my... There we go. I think I'll just take a little bit of this one and my brush. just to tie everything together. And 
and then I'll pop a sentiment in there as well, obviously. But that's it. Again, kind of a monochrome ish looking card. Amanda, are you going to fussy cut it though? I hope so. <laughs> Um, and it would be lovely in all sorts of colours. It would also make a really nice sympathy card. Um, but I kind of, I think the blues work really well when I'm doing the the YouTube and Facebook videos because they make it pop a little bit. I've noticed that some of the colours I've been picking haven't really done that. So um, hopefully, and I know it was kind of a, a bit of a speed card that one, um, but you've got the idea of how how to make that background and do it on a big sheet so that you can then cut it out as many times and make it, you can make maybe 10, 12 cards out of the same piece of background just by doing different things with it. So that is our Magnolia stamp with our trailing frames stencil. Um, and I think that's all of it. So that's me done, I think, tonight. My goodness, an hour and 16 minutes. That's a long time. Suddenly, all everybody, all of your comments are coming back round that you sent through first thing when you first joined me, which is random. So even the machine's telling me we've been on waffling for too long. So that's everything. Anybody's got any questions, please feel free to email me. Email me even. Um, don't forget to come and oh, now telling me I've got new comments. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, don't forget to come and watch us on Hobby Maker. I can't remember the, the channel numbers. If anybody's watching and they know the channel number, I think it's Freeview73. Um, I will confirm the other channels, but Sky, um, we're on Sky Freeview. If you haven't got, it's not on Virgin, I do know that, but you can watch it on YouTube. Is I believe it goes live on YouTube and I watch it on the computer um, when I'm sat at work. So you can easily log on and watch it on the computer. Sky 170, thank you, Amanda. Um, pop on and have it playing in the background. So please, please join us. It would be lovely to see some friendly faces on the other side of the screen, other side of the camera. I know I can't see you, but it's nice to know that you're going to be there. Um, have a lovely weekend if we don't see you before. Um, suddenly my computer screen and all these sentiments are comments are coming up and down like yo-yos god knows what's going on with that um so that's me done uh we will see you all again i will confirm the next facebook live as i say it won't be in two weeks time it may be next week but i don't think so i think it'll be the week after sometime the week after that um so keep an eye out and i will see you all again soon thank you for joining me